many of the issues and many of the frustrations that black women in America have is that they are not in the same social status as white women. And that's really comes down to it. That they don't have the myth of white womanhood. They don't have the upper middle class lifestyle that they aspire to. That is at the core frustration. Whether or not they admit it, the core frustration is that black women by and large are not on the same level socioeconomically as white women. Okay, so it says, I think you've unfortunately identified one of the central issues of black male privilege. So often black men are used to being under attacked that when it comes to being accountable for the actions we may have, we quickly say, well, I couldn't possibly be doing anything wrong. Look at all the ways in which I'm oppressed. Look at all the ways in which I'm at the bottom of the barrel. What that does is rob us of our, an opportunity to actually build stronger community and it robs black men of a chance to actually take hold of the actions that they have so that we can empower the community. So basically what he says is that black men are so used to saying that they're oppressed that they are not used to taking accountability for anything and they use the victim mentality to keep themselves from actually building. This is the argument that is coming out of the City University of New York from an assistant sociologist that black men are basically victims and that because they are used to being victims, they are therefore not used to building and doing anything positive for themselves that would empower themselves and the black community. Because this is literally, this is a Cynthia G conversation. This is Cynthia G has said this, Kimberly Nicole Foster. I can think of countless diver, I mean, Christy, if I think of some of the divestors and the colorists, like this is Paris Milan, um, Yanni, right here, literally this idea coming out of the city of University of New York from a black male sociologist is saying black men are basically victims. They're used to being victims and um, they're not used to building. This is, this is actually what's being said. Y'all let me know if you guys agree down in the comment section. Now, of course, the issue that I have with this framing is again, this, of course, this assumes that black men haven't built. I mean, we have to remember that black men are largely responsible for the freedom we have today. Um, the black men had not fought in the civil war and had not waged war because what people don't talk about is like there was there was war waged before civil war even happened. There were um, slave rebellions. There were different insurrection things that happened that literally made it to where the country was at a point of tension where they had to decide whether or not they're going to actually keep slavery or not. Like if black men had not literally waged war and had not fought all the hundreds of years they were impressed, we wouldn't be free today, right? And then let's not even talk about the civil rights movement. I mean, we would not be having this conversation today if it was not for black men. And black men is largely responsible for the internet connection we had. I did this on the Black Male Build Dad Center series of black men being responsible for the the, the smartphone, right? The, I think it's the 2G smartphone. Um, and, then, and the advancements of that, black men being responsible for dot .com, right? Which if there was not a dot .com, we wouldn't be, I wouldn't be live streaming this. I wouldn't be doing this. Um, there are countless examples of the ways black men have not only fought to make sure that black people were free, civil rights movement, right? Um, but for some reason, it's like black men never did anything. Even if you think of what's going on in Africa right now, I don't want to get too much in a tangent, but you have all that going on right in Africa where it's like black men basically being like, no, this country is for us. So they're waging warfare because they're like, these resources are for us and our people. Like we don't want these outside nations and these outside influences, we want our nation for our people and they're waging warfare. But when it talks about, oh, black men don't build, they don't do this for the community. Like nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about those countless examples that have happened literally since every generation where black men in some way, shape or form were fighting or were engaging in warfare. Some of them made um, victories, some of them made losses, but nevertheless, like there's never been a time in the history where just black men collectively all across the war world was just like, we're not gonna do anything. We're just gonna sit here and just be insulated. Like that's never happened. And in the black community, we all know of women and men who certainly have a, a victim mentality for lack of a better term. That certainly exists. I'm not gonna say that does not exist in black women and black men in some examples. What I resist is the idea that the black male pathology is that we are just victims. And so therefore we have never and never will fight for the community because that's just not empirically true. Like I said, if you literally look at everything from the slaver, sla slaver's wolves, um, if any, even after that in Jim Crow, the different ways that black men helped to organize, literally Marcus Gar, I mean, him alone, like I said, he built an international organization that was organizing people in America and the Caribbean and Africa, helping to try to create 
a black nation, right? Literally, so it's like you can't you can't say there hasn't been large examples of black men organizing, doing things to help try to improve um, their people, whether it be in, in America or even in other nations. So it's just it's just not really historically true. Okay, let's continue this. So here he says, among black women in particular, I get a lot of amens and saying, thank you for actually exposing this among black men. One of the most common ones I get is, well, this seems ridiculous in an oxymoron. How could black men be privileged? It's like jumbled trip. It doesn't add up. So basically he's saying black women agree that black men haven't built anything. And um, this goes back to what we've all known to be true. Uh, many of the issues and many of the frustrations that black women in America have is that they are not in the same social status as white women. And that's really comes down to it. That they don't have the myth of white womanhood. They don't have the upper middle class lifestyle that they aspire to. That is at the core frustration. Whether or not they admit it, the core frustration is that black women by and large are not on the same level soci socioeconomically as white women. Now, again, if you understand America, how it was set up, if you understand the system of the couple hundred years of slavery, followed by Jim Crow and then the civil rights movement, which disproportionately, right, benefited white women and then therefore white men. And then, and then after that, you know, a few black and brown women. But if you understand, like, the system was not set up for black men to have the same position as white people, like, it... Like, why are you frustrated at a system that was set up in that way? <laughs> or why are you frustrated at the people who were clearly just a byproduct of the system that was set up in that way? So, that, like I said, that's a whole other discussion. But he really just broke down what we all know to be true. Black women who are upset in this way are just upset that, again, Black men have not been able to build a system or build something in America that puts them on the same level socioeconomically as white women. That, that's, just, that's just really what the frustration goes down to. I'm already seeing this. This is why you have black women on the amen on the, on the amen um train. And this is why you also have the conversations about where all the good black men, black when they're in jail or they're snow bunny and all that kind of different stuff and then all or all the uh, high earning black men or with, with Becky again it's because they're mad that they don't have that socioeconomic position and high numbers that is the core frustration and we're seeing this and again we're, we're, we're seeing these ideas being birthed out of universities being birthed out of um out of college and from what i can tell many of these points are ab abstract at best they're not empirical they're abstract at best and then when you examine the arguments they clearly fall apart this is why it's important to understand this is a theory 